Good morning. This lesson is for my honors integrated one class and my integrated one class. But before I get started, I want to say that I hope everyone is doing all right out there. I don't know the title of this lesson. It depends on what class you're in. But what I do know are our four goals for the day. Our first goal is going to be to review the definition of congruent. Our second goal is going to be an, uh, to understand what congruent shapes imply. Our third goal is going to be how to use what we call a congruent statement. And our fourth goal is going to be to discuss the properties of congruence. So let's go ahead and just jump right in and, and learn, review congruence here. So a review. Congruent figures are figures that are the same shape and the same size. That's what it means to be congruent. All right. So let's jump into our second goal, understanding what congruent shapes imply. Okay, so suppose that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle SRT. We know that both triangles are the same shape and the same size. Again, that's what it means to be congruent. We're starting off with that fact. Now, I need you to think of triangles as the complete objects, like a house. A house is made up of bedrooms, bathrooms, a kitchen, and a living room. So... I need you to understand that there's the object as a whole and then there's the parts, okay? So, um, all right. If we were to have congruent houses, that would mean that the houses are the same shape and size. It would also mean that all the rooms would have to be the same and would be in the same location. In order to have identical houses, not only does the outside have to be the same, but the inside has to be the same. And that's the point I'm trying to make here. So think of the triangle as a house, and, and we'll talk about what the rooms are here in a second. So basically, if objects as a whole are congruent, then the parts that make the objects must be congruent and in the same position. If you have two identical cars, then the parts that make the cars must be identical, and they must be in the same position. Back to triangle ABC being congruent to triangle SRT. Since the triangles as a whole are congruent, it follows that their parts, which are just angles and sides, those are the rooms, their parts, the angles and the sides, are also congruent and in the same position. Okay, so if objects as a whole are congruent, then the parts that make them must also be congruent and in the same position. All right, that's what I'm trying to get that point across. That's what congruent shapes imply is that the, if I have congruent shapes, then the parts that make them must be congruent. So I'll articulate that when I come back. So let me erase all of this and set up the next goal, or the next part of the lesson, and I'll be back. I'm back. All right, let's go ahead and continue with our second goal. Um, and I just want to really stress the following statement. Having congruent figures implies that the parts must be congruent and in the same position. And remember, the parts are the angles and the sides, okay? So it's really important that we understand that if we have shapes that are the same, then the parts that make the shapes must be the same, and they must be in the same position. Now, instead of saying same position over and over again, I'm going to replace that with the word corresponding. Corresponding means in the same position, right? Your thumbs are corresponding. They're in the same position. They're, they're next to the index fingers and your wrists. Right, um, <laughs> your index fingers are corresponding because they're next to your thumb and their middle fingers. But I'm not going to show the middle fingers. I like my job. All right. Anyways, back to this. Um, we're going to move on to our third goal now, and it's going to. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to see how to use a congruent statement. So an example of a congruent statement would be the following. This is a congruent statement. Okay, and we can use a congruent statement to list corresponding. Parts, remember corresponding is a fancy way to say parts that are in the same position. So we can use this to list congruent corresponding parts and the parts are angles and sides. We use the order of the letters to accomplish the list. So again, I have my congruent statement right here and the letters by themselves represent angles and two letters at a time represent a side. So I know that angle R must be congruent to angle B. And I know that angle S must be congruent to angle A. And I know that angle T must be congruent to angle C.
And again, I know that these angles must be congruent because the shapes that they're in are congruent. So if the shapes are congruent, the parts that make up the shapes must be congruent. All right, and these are the angles that are corresponding. They're in the same position. Um, my congruent size, we take two, two, two letters at a time in order. <coughs> I know that side RS must be congruent to side BA. I know that side ST must be congruent to side uh, AC. And I know that side TR, right, side TR must be congruent to side CB. So these are the congruent corresponding parts. Let's, let's write that out. And not only can I make a list of everybody who's congruent, but this will help us set up equations. Okay. So again, I would take a minute, write this out, and then substitute in and, and create an equation. Um, now, if we know that, uh, again, if we know that triangle RST is congruent to triangle BAC, and we had a picture, we could add the congruent marks and the congruent arcs. So let's, let's just mark this thing up so we can look at it and see what it would be visually. So I know that angle R is congruent to angle B, so you get one congruent arc. Angle S is congruent to angle A. So you get two congruent arcs. And angle T is congruent to angle C. You get three congruent arcs. All right. Side RS is congruent to side BA. You get one congruent mark. Side ST is congruent to side AC. You get two congruent marks. ST, AC, yeah, two. And side TR is congruent to side CB. You get three congruent marks. And so you can actually see corresponding in this, right? Angle S is between the sides with the one mark and the two marks. Angle C corresponds to angle T. Wait, that's an S. <laughs> Wait, so angle S, let me learn my letters here. Angle S is the angle between the side with one mark and two marks. Angle S matches up to angle A. Angle A is between the sides with one mark and two marks. They're in the same position. They're next to the same things like your thumb, right? So it's important to know who matches up with who, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, erase this. I'm gonna talk about properties of congruence and um, we'll talk a little bit about how to use that in making arguments. So let me erase all this and I'll be back. I'm back for the last time for this video, I promise. Now in, in setting up this, this last part of the lesson, I realized I'm gonna need to make a part two for this video or for this section. And I wanna talk about how to make, a, make an argument, make a proof and, and, and walk you through the structure of this and show you how arguments can be made and, and and hopefully this will help you with the homework as well so uh, there will be another part to this video um i didn't realize when i was putting together the lesson that i needed to talk about proofs but i i will make another another video that addresses that but let me let me check off the fourth goal of this lesson and its properties of congruence um the reflexive property of congruence this basically says that you're congruent to yourself. You're the same as yourself, right? Angle A is congruent to angle A. Side BC is congruent to side BC. Um, the second one would be the symmetric property of congruence. 
And it basically means if you have a congruent statement, like angle A is congruent to angle B, you can switch the order and say angle B is congruent to angle A. Same thing with side lengths, side CD is congruent to side EF, which means side EF is congruent to side CD. Transitive property, the one that we were using that, I, that we're actually gonna use in proofs here quite a bit, is a way to bring two things together, right? If two things are the same as, a, if two things are the same as a third thing, then those two things must be the same. So if angle A is congruent to angle C and angle B is congruent to angle C, then angle A must be congruent to angle B. We can also talk about this in terms of sides. Side DE is congruent to FG and side HI is congruent to FG. Then that means that these sides themselves must be congruent because two things congruent to the same thing must be congruent to themselves. I think I said that right. Um, and we use these steps to just, we use these properties to justify steps in, in, in arguments and and again, like I said, I want to, I'll create just another video of just working through some proof and showing you how to make a mathematical argument. Uh, and it's going to take some practice. And the more vocabulary you know, the better off you're going to be. Um, so let me just go ahead and end this lesson with this last, uh, last part. Using the list of congruent corresponding parts created from a congruent statement is also a justification for a step in arguments. We say... For our justification, corresponding parts of congruent figures or are congruent or CP, CFC for short. So I'm going to go ahead and end this lesson here. I'm going to create another lesson where I do talk about proofs and how, how they're structured and how they're, you know, how to hopefully do them. Um, again, you're going to struggle with that. It's, it's totally normal and, and and we understand as, as math teachers that it's it's hard to make an argument or hard to learn how to make an argument so we'll we'll start practicing that um but again i hope everyone is doing all right out there have a good day everybody bye bye